love you All the good times we had, I wish I could repeat them For the past three months Love and feeling a little fever Hi everyone, please be sure to get yourself some merch. The Tarya the Poet merch is the best type of merch. I think everyone will really appreciate this merch. And if you get some merch, I'll tag you in the next video. And with that being said, stay tuned to the video. What's good, y'all? So last week, y'all seen that I was on this video. And this is the next video. So with that being said, MF Doom... Let's watch it. Let's watch and see what this video is about. The art of misdirection. Or misdirection. I, MF Doom is very mysterious. I know he has lots of music out there. I listen to a lot of his albums. You know. And my favorite album was Doomsday. Wait, hold on. Let me get that accurate. Um, I'm on Spotify right now. Hold on. Listening to Everything for Sale by Westside Boogie. Y'all should listen to him. Good good dude good dude come on mf doom all caps mm -hmm. no operation doomsday yeah and born like this i like that as well um and victor vaughn i could say mad villainy is good it got some some songs in there like i say what's one of them um, Fancy Clown, All Caps, Rhinestone, Cowboy. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was a good song. I like that song. Like, a few songs in there I like. Don't get me wrong. I listen to those whole albums. When it comes to MF Doom, you have to listen to it from start all the way to finish to get the album. But it's him just spitting ill rhymes about all types of things. Mmm, food. He just talked about eating good and talked about food a lot of times. He was saying stuff that he sees and life in general yeah people don't realize doom is very complex with his music so let's just watch this and they'll possibly break it down a lot better let's get into it be sure to like and subscribe and comment yeah thank you for your patronage hello everyone today we'll be taking a look at the intricate attention to detail seen on my favorite manga series attack on titan uh Alright, well, instead we'll talk about the best TV series of all time, the crime drama, The Soprano. Well, I guess we could talk about Doom again. Yeah! Since I think we can all agree that MF Doom is one of the most talented lyricists in all of hip-hop. The way Doom puts together his verses can be very offbeat and unusual, especially in contrast with your traditional MC. One of my favorite aspects to this oddball approach to lyricism comes in the form of Doom's misdirections. Or missed lines? Fill in the blanks? I'm honestly not even sure if there's an official title for these type of bars. But pretty much, it consists of the writer, in this case, Doom, setting up an obvious punchline only to redirect it in a way which listeners wouldn't have expected. But don't take it from me. Doom talks about this type of lyrical misdirection in his Red Bull Academy interview. As I'm writing it, I'm also thinking of it from a listener point of view. So, I try to make it to where I can catch myself off guard. Like, you want to you wanna keep the story interesting. Like, as soon as somebody thinks they know what you're going to say, that's part of the essence of rhyming, is to, not, is to keep everybody kind of off, off guard a little. So, I, I, I take that and I stretch it with these, with these different things. Like, leave one word blank, you know, knowing that the listener is, is following along and will fill in that blank. Like how, you know, I'm following along and will fill in the blank. But always put the word that, that, that you would least expect. Or what they think might be there is not there, but it still makes sense in another way. I'm quite certain Doom didn't pioneer this type of technique. He just so happens to be a rapper who I personally listen to who just so happens to use this method. For example, take the track Great Day. We got a commercial. Oh, y'all be sure to watch this movie when it comes out. Oh. Please get done, please get done. I just take it out because I ain't about to get copyrighted. I'd be darned. 
This is one of my favorite Doom songs over one of my favorite lib instrumentals. The song is composed of a short intro and an uninterrupted verse, which is another reoccurring theme in Doom's writing, where Doom will intentionally skip out on a chorus in order to allow himself to fill up the song's runtime with more bars. It's around halfway through the song that we find our misdirection, where Doom says, Doom nearly slips like Freudian here since he obviously didn't have the intention of saying booze. He was about to say something a lot more disrespectful before catching himself. What Doom did intend on is subverting the audience's expectations. And that's what I mean when I say he sets up an obvious punchline only to redirect it in a way which we wouldn't have initially expected. And it's not his most lyrically complex bars, but it's a nice sudden change of pace that challenges the listener's expectations and keeps you engaged. Or as Doom puts it, It puts a sense of longevity to the record as well. To where you know you never know what what's, what you know what what the dude's gonna say, so you want to hear it again. And before we get to the next misdirection, I'd like to remind you to please leave a like on this video. As you all know by now, leaving a like on the video greatly impacts the video's performance. If you'd like to go the extra mile, you can also leave a comment to supplement the algorithm. All right, I'll shut up now, and we can get on to the next misdirection. Born like this into. The Another one of these misdirections could be found on the controversial Bati Boys. The rumor goes that one of Doom's children said that he liked Batman more than Victor Von Doom. So in very petty fashion, Doom decided to write a diss track to Batman. I say rumor because I can't find any proof that this is the actual truth. As one of the people in my Discord put it, this was probably just a case of a game of telephone. Regardless of that, the track makes sense within the lore and the world of MF Doom since Doom is the villain after all. So it makes sense that the villain would be dissing his enemies. In an attempt to not get demonetized by the almighty YouTube algorithm, I'll put it this way. Earlier, I said that this track is controversial. And that's because this track is notorious for its, uh, homo sapien phobia, we'll say. The title of the track has a double meaning. It refers to Batman, as well as the Jamaican term, Bati Boy. Both of which tie into the theme of the song, and I think it's pretty clever. The misdirection in this track could be found around the halfway mark. This misdirection is a little weird since Doom cuts himself off by putting an entire interlude in the middle of the bar. Next up is... Hey! This was actually one of the first singles to be released in the follow-up to Operation Doomsday, which is a pretty solid pick. The track is coded in Scooby-Doo samples, and it sounds great. One of my favorite things about this track is how Doom wraps up the song with a Scooby-Doo reference. He does a similar thing like this on the song Accordion, where he wraps up the song with this line. Slip like Freudian, your first and last step to playing yourself like accordion. I'm sure there's more examples of Doom doing this type of thing, but let's stick to misdirections for this video. Speaking of which, the misdirection in this track is this. Intelligent, used to write and be well spoke. Now all a nigga wanna do is fight and sell. Tell joke. I love how creative Doom can get when cutting himself off with these misdirections. In this track, he uses a sample. In Great Day, he clears his throat. In Bati Boys, he throws a whole interlude at you. You get the idea. Next up is Curls. It's one of the shorter songs off Mad Villainy, and it's one of the first MF Doom tracks that I really took a liking to. It goes without saying that the instrumental on the song is fantastic. I love the way Doom describes his world and depicts himself. His life is like a folklore legend. Or Land of Milk and Honey with the Swirls, where reckless naked girls get necklaces of pearls. First he gave her the emeralds, then he gave her the pearls. <laughs> you know, for a form of media that relies mainly on sound, Doom does an amazing job at painting a picture for you. Anyway, the misdirection for this song can be found towards the end of the track, where Doom says, He asked the teacher if he leave, will he pass? His girl is home alone, he's trying to get the... If there's any song that embodies the concept of a misdirection, it'd be The Mic Sounds Nice, since this track is just filled to the brim with random misdirections. My personal favorite is If he had thick hair like Ric Flair chick, he wouldn't know if Holes really cared for the lyrical skills. Doom even acknowledges the trope in the song itself. Personally, I don't have that strong connection with this song, but if you can't get enough of these type of bars, then this will probably be one of your favorites.
As I was writing this, I didn't even know where to start with the song. Cookies is one of my favorite closing tracks off any Doom album. It's a great closer to one of, if not Doom's most creative project. I could probably make a 5 minute video just talking about this track alone. In the song, Doom takes us through his day, which starts with one of the most hilarious opening lines. Like, hmm, what could he possibly be doing at home alone, which ends up with him getting carpal tunnel. The world may never know. The closing verse is non-stop cookie references, and it's where we find the song's misdirection. He don't mess with the Ritz bits, we thin saltines or triscuits, mott soles or cheese its catch sugar fits every time that he sees. It's funny to me, I literally only caught this misdirection while doing research for this video. And that's part of what I love about Doom's music. The fact that I could come back to the song that I've known for years and come away noticing a new detail. It's the reason I enjoy something like Attack on Titan or The Sopranos. These shows have a lot of rewatchability. Enough to the point where you can watch an episode 5 times and still come away noticing a new detail or having a different interpretation altogether. It heavily rewards and almost necessitates multiple viewings. And I feel like Doom's music exhibits this trait. And as he puts it, it adds to the longevity of his art. Something which a lot of rappers simply don't have nowadays. Bonus example. While making this video, my friend invited us to a party he was hosting. Towards the end of the party, our inner circle of close friends went to go chill in his room. We were all putting on different music, and I decided to throw on Great Day. One of my friends pointed out the fact that Doom mentions Kurt Angle. Now, I had no clue who Kurt Angle was, but apparently he's some pro wrestler who won a gold medal in 1996. So there you go. Another example of a song that I've known for years, but came away knowing something new about it. Space Hose is a song which sees Doom cross over with Adult Swim OG, Space Ghost. In his typical villainous fashion, Doom takes over the talk show. I know it's just a tongue in cheek gag for the song, but the more I think about it, the more I realize the great potential for this concept. Think about it Doom Malay, under his MF Doom character, hosting some sort of talk show. He could talk to all sorts of different fictional characters as well as real life figures. Obviously that's impossible now, but it would have been a cool idea for a show. In the misdirection for this track, Doom continues the whole theme of dissing superheroes when he says this. That's a structural razor played out gag in the cape and a pantsuit, looking like a straight out dag. That was close. Doom nearly got me demonetized there. <laughs> wow. Zang. What an asshole. Another great track off Doom and Danger Mouse's album, The Mouse and the Mask, features a misdirection on the track No Names. You have to find a new hen fight to drink your lick. Ten years later, see how enzyme is shrink your wallet. I don't really have that much to say about this one. I just figured I'd mention it since it's a misdirection I just so happen to know of. Now here's a bonus. It's not exactly a misdirection, but it's on theme with the whole concept. Unlike the other examples, this one doesn't really utilize lyrics as much as it does the beat. The track I'm referring to is Beef Rap. Instead of wordplay, Doom utilizes the instrumental itself to misdirect the listeners into thinking that the song is ending, only to surprise you with an entire extra verse. Here, first time listeners would assume that the track is over. That is, until Doom comes out of nowhere with this. And that's pretty much all the misdirections that I personally know of. I'm certain there's more of them out there. These are just a collection of the ones that I've noticed in my own listening experience. If you know any more, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. That, that, he did a full explanation for most songs on just about every album of his. I like this. I, I really do like this. Y'all be sure to support this guy. This guy is... And... <laughs> this dude right here, I'm gonna subscribe, so... <laughs> I'm just happy, bro. Look, rest in peace MF Doom, man. Rest in peace, MF Doom. He changed my style of writing and everything. Like, this is my long book, but I got another composition book filled with rhymes. And hold on, I got that right here. Yeah, you see, let me check out rhymes right here. Let you see, got a few rhymes right here. Yeah, I've got a few rhymes in these pages. But I got a whole box full of rhymes, so. But that's not a lot. That's not a lot. Anyways, that being said, 
please be sure to subscribe and like the video and support my guy right here great youtuber stay tuned for the next video peace